Serious about online trading? Secure your funds, keep your merchandise safe, and use a company that keeps both the buyer and seller protected the whole way through. That's escrow.com. Payments you can trust. Hey everybody, I'm Angela St. Julian and I'd like to welcome you back to the Brand Bar Happy Hour Chat. I am online today with Andrew Rosener, founder of MediaOptions.com and Gonjapreneur.com and Karen Bernstein, principal over at Bernstein IP. Hey, you guys. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing great. Great. I'm actually, I'm actually in Las Vegas right now at the MJ Business Daily Conference, which is the largest legal cannabis conference uh, annually in the United States. There's approximately 8,000 people here. What? 8,000 people? Yeah, it's the largest turnout. They're sold out. Uh, yesterday, uh, Penn Jillette spoke. I don't really know where he's coming from, but every celebrity and their mother is trying to start up a cannabis brand, so uh, <laughs> probably why. Well, you know what? A lot of big change happened last week, so I'm, I'm expecting that's going to do, like, big things for the industry over in Nevada specifically, although that's not the only state we're going to talk about. But before we get into it, I think we should give the audience a little bit of background. So I'm going to start with you, Andrew. You can tell us a little bit about yourself. And then when you're done, Karen, you jump in there and you tell us a little bit about yourself as well. Okay. Uh, so as you said, I am the founder of Gondrepreneur.com, which is a cannabis uh, news uh, website. We also offer some small, uh, small and medium-sized business uh, products and services, mostly mm -hmm. software services, uh, PR, advertising, marketing, and then uh, media options. And media options is my primary business. We are a domain brokerage firm. Um, we uh, we have a domain investment uh, uh, owner-operated domain domain, uh, domain investment portfolio as well. Uh, but our primary business is brokerage, so acquisitions and sales uh, for third parties. All right. Karen. And I'm supposed to be in Las Vegas with Karen, but uh, I was forced to sleep with our newborn baby uh, instead. So I'm in my office <laughs> in Panama. But I came dressed for the occasion. You sure did. Looks great. I love that bed yeah. coat. Karen? Well, I just want to say, Andrew, that's a good excuse not to come to Las Vegas, but <laughs> exactly, um, and love and love that jacket. So uh, <laughs> I've suggested that Andrew bring it to NamesCon in uh, January. Um, I'm 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 an attorney in New York City. Uh, my firm specializes in patent, trademark, copyright, and IP licensing, with a focus specifically in the internet domain space. Uh, we're on our 10th year now, which is really great. Added a new of patent of counsel patent attorney, David Bogue, who has a computer science background. So software and internet issues are really great. Um, uh, I, my firm is also has transitioned or adopted or, or has clients in the legal cannabis uh, industry. Most of them do not actually handle cannabis. There are ancillary services. However, um, I have uh, pending uh, law admissions right now in the states of Colorado and Pennsylvania where I will be uh, servicing clients in those areas who do um, actually handle you know, dispensaries, growers, and people like that and doing IP licensing and litigation. Um, and. Um, I'm very happy in, to announce that on November 29th, uh, this past summer, I recorded an online educational video uh, directed to uh, intellectual property protection for legal cannabis prof professionals oh. uh, and how to identify uh, your IP and enhance the, enhance the value of your cannabis business to attract investors. And that was produced by Green Flower Media out of the San Diego area, and that will be uh, released on November 29th. So stay tuned for more details. There will be a free uh, download of it, and then from there on, there is a subscription and paid segment of the uh, program that I put together. So I'm really excited about that, um, and I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Angela. 
That is super cool. Now, don't forget us when it comes out. Maybe you can send us a link or something so that people can access it from this uh, this video. Uh, and I don't know, maybe you should talk to, to Drew, too. He's got one of the most or maybe the uh, largest what online, what, do you consider it a magazine, newspaper? Uh, so... Yeah, it's a, I, I guess it's an online magazine is, is, yeah. is sort of what it is. Uh, new, and new for the hub. space. Andrew's um, magazine, is, I mean, his, his website is very well known in the legal cannabis industry. Yeah, see, there you go. Uh, I, I should, I should uh, emphasize that it's, it's, it's targeted at least at the B2B community. So, you know, mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs, for entrepreneurs, um, you know, helping them uh I guess address, understand what's happening uh, in this extremely yeah. fast-moving environment. You know, from from a legal perspective, from a from a, um, a business perspective, um, innovations that are happening, perhaps in other states and not in theirs that they can take advantage of. Mistakes that people are making in a very segmented market um, yeah. that you know allow them to avoid making the same mistakes in their state and their business. Um, you know, so that sort of stuff. That's good. That's a very valuable resource to have. Mm -hmm. So, Karen, let me ask you this. Um, recently, I've been seeing, like on Facebook, you know I follow you on Facebook. <laughs> I've been seeing that you <laughs> that you uh, have been paneling like a lot of um, like legal discussions or conferences, things like that, um, all about, you know, it, or within the growing marijuana, I say, slash cannabis industry. What's going on with that? Is that... Um, indicative of like a major change or something coming down the road or what do you say? Um, yeah, uh, well, a couple of things that are that are uh, of interest, uh, if you're interested, is that if you are carrying, distributing, not carrying, but selling, distributing or manufacturing uh, marijuana, as I refer to it as touching the plant, uh, you cannot get federal trademark protection because it violates the Controlled Substances Act. Uh, marijuana no. is still a Schedule One drug, the same thing as heroin, which is outrageous. Um, oh, wow. And so the uh, United States Patent and Trademark Office will not allow you to uh, get a federal trademark. Uh, having said that, if you provide ancillary services such as health and wellness, um, uh, you know, clothing, uh, uh, educational and informational sort of services, um, those do not directly touch the plan, and you may be able to get federal trademark protection. Ironically, patent and copyright doesn't care whether your uh, work of art or invention is touching the plant. Uh, so, and trade street secrets, of course, where you keep it a secret and you don't even need to file it with any governmental agency are still options. Uh, there's very creative options. For trademarks, if you are touching the plant, what you're left with is either state or common law rights, which basically uh, is state rights is through the Secretary of State's office, then you get state mm -hmm. trademark protection. Common law is just by using it, but you're limited by your geographical area. And some states, like California, follow the federal model and do not permit state trademarks. So if you're operating yeah. a dispensary, for example, in Sacramento, uh, somebody could conceivably use the same name in Los Angeles and um, that's creating some real issues uh, in the industry. So as far as change is concerned, until and unless um, marijuana is taken off of the uh, Schedule 1, um, this is what we're left with. Okay. Just, can I ask a quick question? Jump in there. Yes, please. I, that, that's something that's been very perplexing to me. It's like, why is there such a difference in operational procedure between trademark office and patent office? Well, the reason is, and it's kind of boring, is that trademarks are a child of the Department of Commerce. So uh -huh. they're, you know, trade and, and being able to do interstate commerce yeah. Yeah. governed by Congress. And because of that, Congress has determined by the laws that marijuana violates the Controlled Substances Act. Okay. And, and so patent is you controlled by who? Patent is more of a constitutional. Patent and copyright are actually uh, created from the U.S. Constitution, whereas trademark was a child of, tr of commerce. I mean, it goes back to England, uh, but okay. I don't know more you that. We can talk about that off camera. Okay. <laughs> so what do you guys have a forecast, maybe, uh, Karen, 
as to when we might see a change to that act? Any any chatter about that? Any any thoughts? They tried. There was a rumor over the summer that the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration, was going to possibly deschedule uh, marijuana. But instead, they came out with a paper. I think it was in August that basically said that they're that they may be able to. They will allow clinical testing, but they're still keeping it on schedule one because according to the government marijuana has no health of health benefits which is absurd uh -huh. uh, because it does and we've seen that with um, the non hallucinogenic component of of uh, marijuana which is called uh, cbd uh cannabinoid uh and that yeah. has been shown to be very promising specifically for children with epilepsy and there's also a, a british publicly held company called gw pharma that actually was able to get FDA approval on uh, phase three clinical trials uh, oh. and that also is to help, I believe, for, for epilepsy. So I think that what you will see is once there is, a, especially with the G Pharma, GW Pharma situation, they already own patents um, on various oh. you know, technologies or science for treating uh, certain, certain diseases like epilepsy with a, you know, marijuana-based uh, medicine. Um, if that phase three is successful, it may start to influence Congress. And, you know, with a new president coming in, he's expressed his uh, opinion that it's best left to the states. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. So that puts everything up in the air. We just don't know at this right. point. We're, we're working on it. I mean, the, 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 uh, there are groups in the legal cannabis industry that are working very hard in Congress to influence them. And as you can see with all these states now, uh, having passed uh, either medical or and or recreational laws that the, the majority of states are it's starting to become the majority of states now. So perhaps through their own Congress people, it will eventually change, but we don't know right now. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned about now having ourselves a new president coming in. That wasn't the only big change that happened last week, Tuesday. We had five states with propositions to legalize marijuana in some form or another, and I believe all five um, voted to make that possible. Is that correct, Andrew? Well, we had we had nine states on the ballot, and eight oh, of nine. the nine, yeah, eight of the nine um, either went full recreationally legal for adults uh, or uh -huh. medically. Uh, Arizona being the only one that uh, the measure did not pass, uh, but ah. we had Nevada, we had Nevada, Michigan. Um, uh, let's California. See, uh, California. Cal yeah, obviously California, the big one. Yeah, because that's uh, a big California, one. Florida. Cal California, Florida. Well, I was trying to think of the, the, the full legalization states first, but so it was Maine, Massachusetts, Michigan, yeah. mm -hmm. California. And then uh, for medical, it was Florida, uh, Arkansas, um, Florida, I know. Arkansas. Some too. <laughs> That's terrible. Florida, Arkansas. A lot of them. We'll lock it up sometime. Angela, just yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll follow up. We'll follow yeah, up with but, this. But eight, eight out of nine, eight out of nine states, the measure for legalization, whether it was medical or recreational, passed. Yeah. And you know what? All of us remembered that California was among those numbers, and that's because that's a big deal, right, Andrew? The fact that California is on board, or at least I've yeah. heard. That that means it'll be somewhat of a domino effect now, or what? Yeah, I mean it's such a big population. It, it's, it's you know basically I believe it's just under seventy percent of the United States population now has access to marijuana in one form or another legally. Seventy uh, percent of the population, and so um, I, you know I think I think when you get a state like California that just you know that's such a big momentum piece. Uh, it's going to be very hard for the federal government to ignore. I think that there's pretty much zero chance that a, a Donald Trump uh, government is going to uh, do anything at the federal level to forward the legalization. Um, but I, 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 you know, I tend to believe that, 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 like Karen said, I think he'll leave it to the states to decide and, and, and sort of continue down the same path that the Obama administration has followed um, in terms of just letting the states be as long as there's no, you know, if you're not a bad actor, and, and break state law, then the, the feds will, will sort of stay out of it. Uh, but, I, but I don't think that he'll, you know, push the ball any further forward 
uh, at the federal level. But I think that this, this is going to give us, um, you know, with these big wins, I think this is going to give us the momentum uh, that we need and, and the case studies um, and the availability for real science uh, and studies to happen that the government will accept. Mm -hmm. um, because that's really the key, right? Is they're like, oh, no medical benefit. And let's say it's kind of catch 22. They don't allow, they haven't allowed government funding for uh, scientific study of cannabis right. uh, mm -hmm. since the 70s. And so, and they don't really accept any scientific studies which aren't government funded because um, they consider them biased. And so, uh, you know, it, it's like, how are you supposed to prove that it has medical benefit if, if uh, you know, you've got this catch-22? So I think... Right. You know, but the irony is, the irony is now that the DA has a, is going to allow for clinical testing, we have yeah. millions of dollars, particularly with uh, Jefferson University and Temple University in Philadelphia, have actually created a separate program specifically for cannabis clinical trials. And there is a ton of money that is being poured into ramping up this new program. I'm originally from Philadelphia, so, and I'm a, and I'm also got a law license pending in Pennsylvania, so um, we're real excited about that. Well, that's good. So you know, this is a domain-related show or domain industry show. So I guess I should pull it around to domains now at this point, right? Sure. So I guess I'm wondering how these affirmative votes you know this this these new actions in all these new states might affect the domain industry like more specifically the investors who have been for many years now hoping and praying that this kind of thing would happen and have been investing in marijuana marijuana cannabis related domain names any any, any effect any impact yeah, I mean, so it's had a huge impact in terms of, I think, you know, interest level, uh, you know, immediately following the election. We, we've got a pretty big portfolio and we've got a lot of, you know, interest, a lot of mostly tire kickers, right? You know, people are, mm -hmm. oh, you know, right. they, they come up with some idea, they hear a catchphrase, they're looking for the domains. And so we've got a huge amount of increase in, in, in the inquiries on our cannabis related domains. Um, I think, you know, really ultimately the impact will be the availability for so many new entrepreneurs that want to enter this space um, there's going to be so many new ancillary businesses businesses which touch the plant brands created services promoted that are going to come to market and all of them need a domain and so right um for sure it's going to have a tremendous impact on uh the value and the demand for cannabis related domains um you know i think uh the question is i guess uh, what type of, of domains are going to be in demand. Um, but uh, uh, for sure, it will have a positive impact. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, the same reason why uh, domain demand in general is going up is because of globalization, right? You know, you've got, right. you know, 70% mm -hmm. of the world or whatever the number is, you know, the majority of people don't have access to the internet still. And as they do, you know, over the next five years, I think, um, uh, uh, the number of people that will have access to the internet will increase by, I think, 7x or something. Um, so wow. 5x or 7x, it's, it's a big number, right? I mean, five times the amount of people that have come online in the last 20 years will be go up by 5x, you know, in the next five years. So that's, that's pretty crazy, right? And so that increases the number of people coming online, a certain percentage of those are going to launch a business or a service, they need a domain. And so, you know, it just creates more demand. More demand increases value, um, and so we're going to see the same thing with with domains, uh, with, with cannabis domains. So, Karen, you already out there going to all of these conferences. You too, Drew. This is for both of you. What kind of naming conventions or names are you seeing these new investors in the cannabis industry or st the startup uh, creators? Uh, going for. Okay, so I'll, I'll take the beginning of this conversation, which is that they're not using words like Hannah. I mean, some are, but most of the startups, I just want to tell you that one of my clients runs a private investor conference for investing in legal cannabis. It's kind of like a shark. Mm -hmm. so I get to see a lot of patients. I'm also an accredited investor member. Uh, so is Joe. Um, and uh, you see a lot of pitches from 
uh, accelerators like Hennepy Boulder that these guys, they're, they're not interested in, you know, Buzz, uh, Canna, Green. Well, some of them are into Green, well, although I, in my online educational video, I have bonus materials on the top 10 uh, marks that are, or, or trademarks you should not use. And one of them is uh -oh. Green, Canna, you know, <laughs> Marijuana, Ganja, no offense, Drew. Uh, you, you have a totally different niche, but they're looking at like any other startup. Uh, they're looking at names that may ha have absolutely nothing to do with marijuana. Uh, so okay. surprisingly, 420, you know, maybe there's a couple of people who want to use 420, but they may not necessarily want to uh, kind of market their products and services to the stoner with a stoner kind of. Uh, profile. They they want to be legitimate. They want to have businesses, whether they're edibles, you know, or uh, it's a dispensary, or they're uh, a security firm uh, protecting dispensaries because, ironically, they all have to use cash, including paying taxes, um, which is crazy. Um, so I mean, I don't really see how it's going to change that much, except maybe, just maybe, there are going to be you know uh, people out there that think it's a clever to use a, a cannabis kind of name, but they're talking about big sales with well-funded uh, Series A round money, mm -hmm. uh, looking to buy domain names, the chances of them wanting to like, have you know Stoner or any of those names are pretty low. Yeah, because what Stoner has uh, somewhat of a negative connotation, right? It, it seems like to lack maturity, or it's one of those names that's stuck around for a while that's given, you know, I guess a stereotype. Yeah. So maybe that wouldn't be one that would be used. What about you, Drew? What have you been seeing? Uh, yeah, I, I agree uh, for the most part completely. Um, it, it, it's not, so So I, I come from the seafood business back, way back in the day. And, and, and we used to say, you know, we had, we had inventory and there was certain inventory that was good for selling and there was certain inventory that was good for eating. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's, the same thing applies to demands. There's certain demands that are good for selling to like the wholesale market and sort of like these, you know, the sort of speculative market of, you know, I, perfect example. I just saw a friend of mine called me uh, on the phone this morning and said, hey, I saw this domain on GoDaddy. It's marijuanacollege.com. And it's already at $4,600 with like three days to go. And I was like, marijuanacollege.com is at $4,600. It's an expired domain. And, and it's at $4,600. And I was like, you know, I honestly wouldn't pay like $500 for that domain. But those are the types of domains like, you know, the people that are not necessarily in the cannabis community, the people that are not necessarily like, you know, own a business or, or plan to own a business or invest it mm -hmm. or have really anything to do with the community. But, uh, but I've identified that clearly there's an opportunity here. This is a potentially $200 billion industry over the next five years. Like, like five years from now, there is a very real potential. This is a $200 billion industry. At a minimum, wow. it will be like a $40 billion industry. And it'll probably be closer to an $80 billion industry. And if we go all in and you look at pharmaceutical products that are going to be in the market, you look at ancillary services, it truly could be a $200 billion market in five years. There is no other industry or opportunity on planet Earth today, unless Elon Musk takes us to Mars, and that'll be a trillion dollars. <laughs> um, other than that, this is the biggest growth opportunity that exists in the world today, hands down, period, end of story, right? And we're talking about America. I'm not even talking about globally. I'm talking about America. And as America topples, all the dominoes worldwide start falling because we're the ones that, that, that drove the, the war on drugs in the first place. Yeah. Now, what I'm seeing and actually selling is, is, is brands, just like I'm seeing in the real domain world. You know, years ago, three, not so long ago, two, three, four, five years ago, six years ago, you know, we were selling an amazing amount of exact match keyword domains, you know, mm -hmm. whether it was suitcases.com or, or carinsurance.com, you know, these were the types of domains that were, were, were in super high demand. That's not necessarily the case anymore. Those things still have a place and a home and demand, but the, the values have, have come down and the emphasis is on, on, on strong brands, brands that are pivotal. And when I say pivotal, something that can be, you know, they leave something to the imagination so people can identify it with your brand, your product, your service, but could also be shifted. And so, you know, uh, for, I, can't, I was going to use an example, but I actually can't because of an NDA. But, but uh, you know, <laughs> let's say that you're, you're uh, I, you know, I don't know, Leaf.com. Okay, you know, Leaf.com would be a great brand in the cannabis space because it, you know, it, 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 it's a hat tip to cannabis. 
but it could be pivoted into you know anything. So you, you can have cars. Anything, you live, yeah. There actually are there are cars called Leaf. There's a there's a there's a model of car called Leaf, right? So you know Leaf could be anything. And these are the types of names that I'm seeing sell. Um, mm -hmm. We sold a bunch of, of of good one word brands that maybe had a connotation where you could you could associate it in some way with cannabis, um, uh, but it wasn't you know 420 or cannabis edibles. Nobody wants cannabisedibles.com in the business. At, at least not intelligent, uh. intelligent, not intelligent marketers. Intelligent marketers don't want cannabisedibles.com to sell their, you know, Kiva cannabis chocolate bar. Um, okay. What they, they want Kiva.com. They want, they want, you know, really strong brands that stick out in somebody's memory and are able to be passed around particularly. And this is an important point specifically for marijuana because of the inability of companies to market in mainstream media, it's not allowed, it's, it's, it's illegal, right? right? So, mm -hmm. so they need a brand that can be passed from word of mouth, that can be uh, used in, a, uh, you know, in an, in an optimal way in an alternative media, whether that's on you know, a network of cannabis-related websites, whether that's on radio, newspaper, although newspaper actually, they, they, they can't advertise anymore uh, uh, either. Uh, the the, oh, the U.S. Wow. Postal Service won't deliver newspapers, uh, or it's it's illegal. Ah. It's crime. Google and uh, Facebook and Twitter have policies of their own that they developed that said that if you are selling or handling marijuana, you cannot advertise. But there's nothing stopping those companies from doing uh, organic word of mouth sort of influence or campaigns, and you do yeah. see that uh, because yeah, that's yeah okay. So like but, a regular Facebook post that gets shared a hundred thousand times, that's, yeah. that's more. Right. Yeah. And I agree with Andrew that the concept of trying to uh, spark an, a connection mentally between the name of your product or service and what you're offering could be done in a very creative way. Uh, and trademark lawyers like to call that a strong trademark because Mm -hmm. uh, a suggestive mark is a somewhat strong mark, uh, but you know, then you say to yourself, well, what do I have? What can I offer? Well, I mean, you don't have to have a cannabis name to target cannabis companies. Right. They're coming up with ideas all the time. There's a, there's a company called Work, W-E-R-K, W-U-R-K. Uh, they're a, a payroll company in the cannabis industry, and they don't touch the plant because they're a payroll company, you know. Are they going to call wow. themselves marijuana employee or employer or or uh, payday payday ganja? No, they're yeah. going to call themselves work because yeah. it's fun. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's a tip for the domain investors watching. Basically, that's really what the people in the market who are working in the space, who understand the space, and who probably have the money to pay for good names. That's what they're looking for, and. Um, before we go, I want to I want to find out how those domain investors can get those names in front of people in this space. Um, any suggestions, Drew? So we are uh, because of the the increase in demand that we've been getting uh, for for cannabis related domains. We're actually uh, very very close to launching a new domain marketplace in Gondrepreneur. So we've got a okay. built-in audience of hundreds of thousands of unique visitors every month. We've got a, a very big uh, subscriber list to our newsletter. And so we said, okay, there's no better place to get these domain names out in front of the people that can use them, uh, whether it's an investor, a, uh, a, a business owner, uh, or, or somebody looking to start a business. Um, that is our audience, right? And so there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we basically thought that there is no better place to, to launch a domain marketplace. So that should be rolling out in the next 30 days. And um, oh, right. uh, that'll be a, a, a great way to get your domain names, your cannabis-related domain names in front of uh, in front of the right audience. Any, and what about you, Karen, any tips? Well, for one thing, if you think you have a good name and it's not cannabis-related, you can always ask me. And I'll be happy to pass it along if I know someone. The other, the other thing that we're thinking of, Drew and I were discussing off before we did the show, uh, is the possibility of putting together some sort of 
either auction or offering within the within the industry. And I think that would probably be the next step. Now, a Andrew's idea with Entrepreneur is brilliant, and I think it's wonderful, but also these conferences, there's a, they're a dime a dozen. Absolutely. And so, uh, you know, there were actually, there was another conference going on at the same time as this one <laughs> here in Las Vegas, yeah. just down the road. <laughs> So, You're like, which one do I go to? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 you know, I don't have all the time in the world to go to these things. They're like every other yeah. week. But it certainly seems like that's a prime uh, target if you are at, have a portfolio and you want to try and sell it, is to work it that way. Um, and certainly that I think is going to be the next step um, within the industry because, God, you can't do anything without being online with a good domain name. Yeah. No doubt. That's no right. Doubt. And then you know what? I, this is a, a domain show, but I want to mention this too. I'm a believer in going 100% all the way. If you're going to also get that fantastic domain name for your new business, why not complete the brand and think about your Facebook page, your Twitter handle, your everything else? Because <laughs> I've seen that too, like a mismatched uh, branding thing or marketing thing going on with a company who may have spent so much money on a great domain and has this awful Twitter handle or this terrible Facebook page name. What do you guys think about that? Is all of it necessary or one is, is good enough? Uh, I mean, I mean, I think it, you know, I think we're seeing a very, uh, uh, this is across the board. This isn't had nothing to do with cannabis. I think we're seeing a big shift from, from marketers, um, away from letting third parties own their brand, letting Facebook mm -hmm. or Instagram, you know, sort of own their brand and, and investing the tremendous amount of resources that they do into advertising and marketing their brand on those third parties and, and, and instead uh -huh. trying to draw people back to their domain name. So their I, think website. It's becoming, I think it's becoming less important if we, you know, you have to do some variation of your name, you know, as your Twitter handle, your, your, your Facebook handle. But obviously, if it's possible to get those, those are super strong supporting assets uh, uh, for your business. Um, I'm shocked that, that, that in today's world that those companies haven't taken a step towards creating a marketplace for those handles because um, they need free market capitalism to kick in to make those handles efficient and effective. Because so many I people agree. are just sitting on them in the same way that people sit on domains. Except that, you know, I think intrinsically these are not necessarily uh, tradable assets on par with a domain name. Um, mm -hmm. Because they rely on a third party's platform. Right. But still, nonetheless, I think that they should be opened up free market and, and there should be a better way for people to get a hold of those, you know, um, uh, you know, create value uh, for the people that have them. But um, yeah, if you can get them, great. Yeah, we don't, and you know, you never know what might come of that. That's the thing about uh, the social media outlets; it's ever changing. You, you just don't know. You you wake up and you go to your Facebook page, and there's new buttons and new yeah. things to click and add. You just don't know what's gonna yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Oh, what were you gonna say, Karen? Well, I was just gonna add that you know, with respect to branding, I always recommend to people that the first thing you do is you got Google whatever potential brand name you want, although this isn't really, a, it's kind of a domain name issue, and it, it, but you do that and then and then you try to find the matching domain name. So I tell them to do that. Yeah. I don't tell them to go and find the matching social media handle, although I think it's an interesting concept, um, but at that point after they've done their Google search and they've got the matching domain name that they can buy for $12 or whatever, come to me mm -hmm. and let me do a full trademark search so that we can clear it. Um, but as far as Twitter is concerned, the, unlike domain names where like, if you registered the domain name before the brand ever like existed and, and you usually win domain disputes that way, with Twitter handles, it doesn't matter when the other party may have used the, you know, used the Twitter handle. Twitter has a policy of you know, not allowing people to sit on trademark names with a Twitter handle. Uh, and they have an automated takedown process. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. So you, yeah. can, you know, somebody could have a Twitter handle and they're doing nothing with it. That's the key. If they're not doing anything with it and they've been sitting yeah. on it and you have a brand and you have a trademark registration, you can go to Twitter and say, this person isn't authorized to use the Twitter handle. Uh, you have a chance of getting that Twitter handle, but I 
totally agree with Andrew that, you know, if there's a way for you to have your own platform rather than a third party's, that's best. But the reality today is you've got to have a social media presence. And yeah. perhaps the way to drive that is from your website so that people then understand your weird handle or your right, your Facebook, right. Um, and the drive the traffic there. I can also tell you that there is a company that's in startup mode called Adistry, A-D-I-S-T-R-Y, mm -hmm. and they are trying to be a media buying service in the cannabis industry to try and get around the Facebook and Twitter problems and Google problems with advertising. Mm -hmm. So there are very, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurs out there that are trying to solve this problem uh, by creating their own marketplace like Leafly and, and Lead Maps and all that. They have their own advertising. We've gotten, we've gotten cool. actually uh, quite a bit of business uh, uh, sponsorship and advertising business from Adistry. Adistry. They, sure. they brought, yeah, at Contrapreneur.com, we've, we've, yeah. we've got a lot of uh, sponsors through Adistry. Yeah, well, there you go. You're good people. Yeah. Yep, they are. Well, see, this is an ever-changing industry. I can't believe that it's going to, or it's already expanding, booming so fast. You know, everyone's going to want, if they can, to get in there. But um, I guess, you know what? You two are already in good positions. Good job. Great. You've done a good job getting in there. Don't um, forget to come back and chat with me some more about what's going on. Anything changed? Anything big? We want to know. It's super cool. And I want to thank you both for coming on. And as a thank you, I want to offer you the chance to choose between these really cool barware glasses. <laughs> so we have Dot Bar uh, beer mug and we have the Dot Bar rock glass. That's awesome. You guys can pick which one you want and I will send it to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very nice of you. Yeah, uh, you send me an email. All right. Okay. And then I'll get it over to you. And then also I should say thank you again to the Dot Bar Registry for sponsoring my show and, you know, giving me the opportunity to send these cool glasses out, not just to you guys, my guests, but also to our audience who watch. So all the viewers get a chance to get that as well, and that's super cool. But I hope to see you all at NamesCon real soon. Absolutely. See you next year. Happy holidays to you too. Happy See you holidays. next year.